Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much to the Long, Cap Long Island Capital Alliance for the opportunity to speak here today. It's my pleasure to be here. I am the CEO of Cytosorbins Corporation. We are working to save lives through blood purification. Our ticker symbol is CTSO. As a publicly traded company, please let me remind you of our safe harbor statement for forward-looking statements. As a publicly traded company, uh, we are not going to be presenting forward-looking guidance today, but we, our 10K will be out later this month, and uh, that is something that you can look at your leisure. Cytosorbins is an exciting emerging growth opportunity poised to revolutionize critical care medicine with a powerful blood purification technology called Cytosorb. The goal of Cytosorb is to prevent or treat organ failure, the leading cause of death in the ICU today, uh, and also a major unmet medical need in all medicine, and there are no therapies that help this. The heart of our technology is a highly biocompatible, very porous polymer bead, roughly the size of a grain of salt that act as tiny sponges to basically extract materials and toxic substance out of blood, thereby purifying blood. This is protected by 32 issued U.S. patents with multiple applications pending. We manufacture the beads from raw chemicals at our ISO 1345 certified manufacturing facility in New Jersey. And it, in fact, is one of the highest grade medical sorbents in the entire medical industry today. We have a very strong management team. Myself, I'm the CEO of the company. I'm a board certified internal medicine by, uh, physician by training. I did my MD, PhD at Yale School of Medicine, my internal medicine residency at Harvard at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Dr. Robert Bartlett is our chief medical officer. He's the former head of the surgical intensive care unit at the University of Michigan Medical Center, but probably best known around the world as the inventor of ECMO, a machine that has saved literally millions of lives over the course of many, many decades. Our management team is rounded out by Vince Capone, Ron Berger, and also Dr. Christian Steiner, all veterans of the medical device industry. We are surrounded by leading key opinion leaders in critical care. Here are just some of our advisors in the United States uh, who advise us in the area of critical care, but we also have many other key opinion leaders in Europe as well. I mentioned before that we are focused on the critical care opportunity. Millions of people are admitted around the world every year for life-threatening illnesses such as sepsis and infection, acute respiratory distress syndrome, burn injury, trauma, pancreatitis, influenza, also complications of surgery. In many cases, nearly one in every three people die, really because of two things. First is that these are the sickest of the sick patients in the hospital today. And the second thing is that we have very little to help these patients. We have supportive care therapy, otherwise called life support, to help keep these patients alive, but not really anything to help them get better. And because without these active therapies, uh, people basically linger in the intensive care unit for days to weeks at a time at a cost of two to $3,000 a day. This, inability to help these people cost millions of lives and billions of dollars every single year. The United States, in fact, spends about 1% of our entire gross domestic product, 80 to $90 billion, because of the fundamental ability uh, to impact critical care and improve outcome. So what is the leading cause of death? Again, it is organ failure. Organ failure is when vital organs like the lungs, the heart, the kidneys, the liver, when they fail, it's incompatible with life. Currently, there's very little that can be done with it. If you've known someone in the intensive care unit, you know what I'm talking about. So our solution for the prevention or treatment of uh, life-threatening illnesses and the prevention and treatment of, uh, of organ failure is Cytosorb. This is a very unique blood purification cartridge that's approved in the European Union to safely remove inflammatory substances called cytokines from the blood. In life-threatening illnesses, these cytokines are produced at very high levels, often called cytokine storm, and if left unchecked, it can lead to massive severe inflammation that is well known to be the root cause of organ failure in most cases. Uh, if you've ever had the flu, you've had a mini cytokine storm, but instead of just making you feel bad, in these life-threatening illnesses, it's actually killing your cells, damaging your organs, leading to bad outcome and death in, in uh, critical care. So Cytosorb specifically targets the reduction of cytokine storm, and in, thereby hoping to prevent or treat organ failure. And in doing so, addresses about a 10 to $15 billion total addressable market in the United States and in Europe. This is compatible with standard hemodialysis machines found in hospitals worldwide. All you do is basically take blood out of the body, pass it through this cartridge. The purified blood goes back into the body. We recirculate uh, your entire blood volume 20 to 30 times in a six-hour treatment period, each time with a new cartridge. We've demonstrated in a European sepsis trial that we can remove cytokines and reduce cytokine storms safely as shown here, 30 to 50% reduction. And in high-risk patient populations, that reduction was associated with statistically significant improvements in mortality. 
We need to do larger prospective trials to confirm these data, but the results are very promising. We are currently commercializing Cytosorb in Europe today, currently in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria with a direct sales force. We're combining direct sales and distributor uh, sales to increase our revenue. We launched in the second half of 2012, a very short period of time ago. We've accumulated about 200,000 in sales through the end of 2012, greater than 50% gross margins. And we now have reimbursement in Germany and Austria at more than $500 per cartridge, or roughly $3,500 per patient which eliminates a major barrier to adoption. Uh, in just about a month, we'll be reporting 2012 revenues of about $1.2 $1.4 million based on grant income and product sales. And we plan to expand our direct sales effort uh, based on more than 60 key opinion leaders who are now either using the product or committed to using the product uh, this year. So we are also looking for external distributors or strategic partners to expand throughout Europe where we are already approved and to outside countries where they will accept CE mark approval like India, Brazil, Middle East, and others. And just to give you an example of the revenue opportunity here, at $3,500 to $5,000 a patient, 150,000 cases of severe sepsis, that's a $500 to $800 million market in Germany alone. That's the only place that we were ever successful. Uh, this represents, at the leading hospitals, the revenue opportunity of about one to one and a half million uh, dollars per hospital just for the application of sepsis. Uh, from a competition standpoint, surprisingly, there are no approved therapies for any of these diseases that you see here. It's a major unmet medical need. We have validation from DARPA and the U.S. Army. We have a $3.8 million five-year contract with DARPA uh, to basically use our therapies to treat sepsis. We also have $1.1 million in SBIR grants from the U.S. Army to use our therapy to treat burn injury as well as trauma. We have strong interest from other military branches as well. Our beads form the basis of a very valuable technology platform. Cytosorb for critical care, chemo defense for blood transfusion, contrast sorb for CT imaging and interventional radiology, drug sorb for drug overdose, and beta sorb for renal applications. We believe that our company has more, more potential than biotechnology, yet with lower risk. Cytosorb is commercialized now in Europe, generating revenue. It's a 10 to $15 billion opportunity, and our approval in Europe covers a, any situation where cytokines are elevated. That means we can be used on label for trauma, burn injury, sepsis, and other things. These are all major, unfortunately named, killer applications. We have a compelling need to have message, saving lives while reducing costs. We have little to no competition. We have an excellent business model. This is a razor blade disposable in someone else's razor business model. We expect to have gross margins greater than 80% with volume. Uh, we have the same US, uh, we have the same US upside with a pivotal trial being planned in the United States. And our cash needs, our manufacturing clinical trials are significantly less expensive than biotech. And in addition, we have a robust pipeline with multiple shots on goal. This is just some of our uh, financials. We're currently about an 11 cent stock. Covered by Zacks, we're covered by Green Murray. Zacks with an outperform rating, 50 cent price target. Green Murray also buy rating, 50 cent price target. Oops. And uh, in terms of catalysts, we are building this business based on three issues. Commercializing Cytosorb is the main thrust driver for our company, but also new product introductions as well as strategic partnerships will round out our value proposition. So to sum it up, we are, believe that we are on the ground floor of commercialization with this particular company, multi-billion dollar markets with a unique product that is commercialized today, saving lives and hopefully uh, uh, reducing costs. We have growing product momentum, but especially for the audience here today, the main thing is that we are a relatively undiscovered company. Most people here today have never heard of Cytosorbents, yet we are an up and coming company. We're currently raising a convertible note right now, $2 million, if you're interested, please see me outside at our table. Uh, and also, uh, if you're interested in our uh, stock, uh, we uh, trade under the ticker symbol CTSO. Thank you very much. Um, great, great presentation. Uh, I'm going to be presented in a correct form with Rachel up there as well. Uh, what's the regulatory pathway for Is it a 510K or a PMA? Sure. Um, in fact, this is a class three device, yet a 510 kable device. But for life-threatening illnesses like sepsis, it is a PMA path. Uh, but that provides some competitive advantage as well. If we uh, go through that pathway, it's very hard. People have to do a PMA trial to uh, compete with us. And in terms of reimbursement, have you talked to payers yet to get a CPT code? Uh, 
because we're not approved yet in the United States, uh, we're not quite at that stage. But we've talked to many people involved in the healthcare uh, uh, arena, and the, the fact that keeps people in the ICU today is organ failure, right? They have to be on mechanical ventilation, they can breathe, dialysis to help their kidneys, et cetera, et cetera. At a cost of two to $3,000 a day, it's very expensive. If we can prevent organ failure from happening or treat it, we can save significant costs. A sepsis patient, on average, $45,000. A burn patient, 30% of their body burn, a quarter million dollars. This is where hospitals lose money every single day. This is really the crux to potentially saving costs in the ICU. So the last part of the question is, in terms of regulatory pathway, how much of the data uh, in EMEA can be used with the FDA? So uh, the safety data and the early efficacy data is all usable. Germany is a well-known clinical trial center uh, country, uh, and the FDA recognizes those studies very well. But we will have to do a US-based uh, study here in the United States. We're looking to potentially partner this device and have that study being paid for by a strategic partner. Thank you. Any other questions?